In this video, following on from our best ever result in the top split here on Gran Turismo Sport last time out, where we achieved a top 10 result through picking the right strategy, we're here for another FIA event. This time though, it's a one make event, at a track where I am probably at my quickest. So let's see again if we can get in the top split once more, and if we do, let's see if we can upset any of the big boys. Hey guys, Eerie is here, welcome back to the channel and thank you for choosing to join me here for another video. If this is your first time here and you like watching all sorts of sim racing related stuff, then subscribe now and hit the bell icon as well so you get notified of every new video I upload and you don't miss a thing. So you join me here in the pre-race practice, where I'm getting used to the car as the car stipulated for this one is the Group 4 Volkswagen Scirocco, which is an FF car which handles, of course, much differently from our usual rear-wheel drive cars. So you need to drive it completely differently. Mainly you need to be patient on the throttle because if you floor it coming out of a corner rather than the back stepping out, as you have in the rear-wheel driven cars, the front wheels will just pull the car in a straight line, which takes some getting used to. But we got used to it after some practice and managed a 206.391 which for comparison, you know I always like to see where I am against some of the quickest drivers around, was within one second, just about, of perennial World Tour finalist TRL Manu Rodri, and just 1.1 seconds of the best time in the entire EMEA region, which I am very happy with considering it's a long lap of over two minutes here, and again shows that we have work to do, but we continue to creep closer and closer to those drivers on the top 10 leaderboards. And we're going to take that confidence into the race and see what we can do here. As the lobby is revealed, we have again made top split. The elitists out there will say it isn't truly the top split, or split one point something, but top split during the week is at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Now I, like most of us who are at work then, so I'll never be able to race in those lobbies. And on a Saturday, I socialise with friends or family, so if I'm not intoxicated, I'll come home and do it afterwards, which I'm doing in this one here. For me, if there are no splits above it, it is top split. Plus look at the absolute state of this lobby. We've got Manu Rodri, Sparks, SVDR, Jones, MX Steve to name but a few and it's probably, upon reflection, the strongest lobby I have been in to date. So we've gone out here as you can see, we had 10 minutes for this quality session. You will have seen that I put TC on for the first lap just to save those tyres. The fronts have a lot to do as I mentioned earlier, so we need to preserve these as much as possible while we can. As always then, first thing we need to do is get a banker lap in, and as insurance, if I get anything wrong on subsequent laps, I can fall back to this one. And also, as always, I'm trying to position myself for a good slipstream here. I'm in a train of four, headed up by Manu Rodri. So unlike previous races, we will not be short of slipstream for this one. Unfortunately though, it wasn't a great lap. I found myself feeling very nervous. I have had these nerves for all of the top split races I've been in. I'm sure it will subside at some point and I'll feel a bit more comfortable soon, but as a result I had lost the slipstream by the end, and I come across the line to log at 207.946, which was about a second off pole. But most importantly, the banker lap was logged, so I came in to go again. Here we go again then for attempt number two. Again, good slipstream position we have here, we're currently behind the sixth place car, but then they bin it in the Degners, which is far from ideal, as his departure means we've now lost the slipstream to the cars up in front, which we need for the fastest parts of the track where the slipstream would have helped us the most. But whilst compromised, we still improve slightly, but not all that much. We come across the line with a 207.807, putting us down in 19th place. But it isn't all bad, as we're only 5 tenths of 5th as you can see there. Such is the fine margins here in these lobbies, and in considering I did 2 thirds of the lap by myself, including the long back straight without a slipstream, I think it could have been 
much better for us here. And despite the strength of this lobby, I'll be taking that time into the race and looking to get in and amongst it in this one. Here we are then lined up for the race itself. We haven't got too much time to say much here as the lights are about to go on for a rare standing start. As you can see here, I'm about to put traction control on two to limit wheel spin during the first phase. I've also got the handbrake on as the lights are starting to go on. The lights are about to go out here. We take our finger off the handbrake and we're away. Now I need to get that TC back down to zero for the second phase and then get the radar on before we get to turn number one. We managed to do that though and we're going to take it nice and easy here as we arrive at turn number one. Getting off the throttle early because if you don't have any contact you won't have any penalties. Unlike though the guy who is so distraught up ahead by getting a penalty that he's going to end his race early on. But actually if you have a look at the track map he then changes his mind and keeps going. Very strange decision there indeed. But now we've managed to survive that first corner let's take a look at the livery for this one and give a quick nod to the creator as we didn't have a chance to at the very start. So a big thank you to you Crazy Tribe N7 for this M&M, the chocolate ones I hasten to add, not the peanut ones because they're rank, inspired livery. We're also going to cover the strat early on in this one, as it's going to start pretty early here. We're here at one of my favourite tracks, Suzuka, and we have the mediums and hards available, but no softs for this one, and the hards are a requirement. So I decided on the basis of that, as you can see, to put the hards on at the very start and then get them back off the car as early as possible. I'm then going to do two six lap stints on the mediums, keeping me on the faster tyre for the remainder of the race. We are not the only one with this strategy in mind though, as two others come in as well. The guy ahead and the driver behind who threw himself off at turn number one. So now that we've got rid of those hards and are on the faster compound, we're going to try and catch the pack as they continue to battle up in front and this is the importance of a clear track. If we can use the mediums to our advantage, use that fresh rubber to catch up to the back of them, we will have essentially negated the time lost through the pits and then been on the quicker compound for at least half of the race longer than those around us, giving us a clear advantage over those who started on the hards and then stayed on them. Moving ahead to the end of the lap here, the Spaniard is going to come off hards a lap later than us. I'm not sure of the thinking behind that. Maybe he decided to change to a different strategy on the fly. Well, either way, we'll take that position. And up ahead, the Frenchman is going to go off at turn number one. And as you can see, we are very much catching those ahead. We have certainly made up for the pit stop loss already. And we can see the advantage here as we go around the outside of the Frenchman at the end of the S's. I did enjoy that move, I've got to say. And more gains are on the horizon as the two cars ahead have not only been holding themselves up, but they've also got themselves a penalty each. So thanks to the move on the Frenchman back there, we're up to 17th, but I expect two more places once they serve their penalties. But before they do that, as we come here into the first part of Spoon, the Spaniard at the head of the pack of four ahead goes wide, allowing us to gain yet more time on them. So as they serve these penalties, oh, there's three of them actually who are going to do so, we're going to go up from 17th to 14th here, and we are now right behind and think about a move on the Spaniard, or to pay him the respect he deserves, address him by his actual name, Lucas Ordinez. Now for those who don't know, Lucas deserves respect because he is the inaugural GT Academy winner, who became a professional racing driver by winning the competition, he is like the old school version of Igor Fraga, for those who aren't aware of him. And since winning the GT Academy competition, he's raced in Le Mans, the European Le Mans series, and has even been in Super GT. Well, he wasn't in Super GT, as in Steve, Super GT. I mean, he raced in the Japanese car series, just to clear that up. But anyway, moving swiftly on, he is also part of the Spanish commentary team at the GT Sport Live events and now he is racing against and has been overtaken by me. Now, I don't know if that's me doing well or him doing badly. 
I'll let you guys decide that one. But incredibly, once I've overtaken the inaugural GT Academy winner there, we are now up to 13th. As we head down the start finish straight here to end lap number 5 and start lap number 6, the Brit is going to come in, promoting us up to 12th now. Not bad having started in one but last on the grid. Actually, make that 11th as Calder on there gets onto the Astro and goes around. I really feel like I'm driving quite well right now. I'm not really making any real big mistakes and I haven't done so for some videos now. I used to do a lot of spinning, going wide, getting penalties, forgetting to put the correct tyres on and a whole host of other stuff. Stuff that I'm just not doing right now. Touch wood anyway. And a little bit later on in the lap, the German gets himself a penalty for exceeding track limits. We're going to get alongside as he runs wide coming through 130R and then he defends with all his might here coming down into the Casio triangle. Even then going wide again on the final corner, only to come in. I would understand if we were battling for position or if we were on the final lap, but all he has done has cost us both time before he comes in. Now that decision is up there with the guy who binned it on the first lap only to carry on. Incredibly strange once again. Not much bigger picture thinking going on in this one. So once the German has stopped defending here, some say he's still defending to this day, we are now up to ninth place. And this is going to be our in lap. So we come in here on schedule and change for another set of mediums, which we're going to be on until the end. And as we emerge, we are in 14th, kind of alone here. We're a couple of seconds behind the group up in front and three seconds ahead of Lucas behind. I suspect some cars will be on the one-stop strategy, meaning if they started on hards, they'd be coming in at the end of this lap here. We'll find that out at the end of the lap. So in the meantime, we're gonna try and keep the gaps of the car behind here whilst making inroads to the group up in front who are battling, so they should be holding each other up fingers crossed, allowing us to close in. Moving to the end of the lap then, a couple of cars as we suspected they might do come in. And as we look ahead we can see all the way up to 7th place. But looking behind, now that we're on the same compound, Lucas has taken a few tenths out of us here and the pressure is on to keep him at bay. As we come through Spoon here on lap number 9, up ahead the battling is very, very close. Unwisely close in my view, given the sensitivity of the penalty system right now, they're in a very tight group of 5, and inevitably you will look closely up ahead and see that there's going to be contact. And also maybe inevitably as well, penalties are dished out left, right and centre. And whilst all this is going on, true to form here, we're just going to continue to drive as cleanly and as smoothly as we can and try and walk up to the back of this group as they continue to lose time battling one another. We cross the line to start lap number 10 and Lucas as you can see there on the delta has dropped the gap by a second. That's been since the pit stops, so only two seconds now. And we're in the toe of the battling group up in front. Now we're a bit closer, you can see the size of the penalty the MX3 driver has. We should easily clear him once he serves that, but the problem is going to be and I can't believe I'm saying this, in a lobby such as this, we may actually be held up until he serves his penalty. And before we get to the penalty gate, my fears have been realised, and I'm right up behind them now, and actually being held up as we come out of Spoon here. The driver in front is going to serve his penalty now, promoting us up to 11th, and we are right up behind 10th. If we could get into the top 10 once again, for a second race in a row, in this, a clearly much stronger lobby than the one before, considering we started pretty much last in 19th place, I would be very, very happy indeed. Rejoining the action on the very next lap, coming out of the hairpin, the Polish driver is going to go wide whilst trying to defend, end up on the dirt and go off. And now, we're in the top 10 of a top split race once again. For a second race in a row, <laughs> what on earth is going on here? But now there is something else that's going on. I need to get past the car in front as Lucas is catching, catching, catching. I try the old Kai here as we come down the back straight, faking giving up on the move and then coming back again, 
but he doesn't fall for it. Fair play to him. I'm then here, once we're done with 130R, going to try and go around the outside at the Casio Triangle, giving me the inside for the second part. Again, his defending was really, really good, as I should really expect at this level. Keeping it nice and clean as well, despite the penalty system, there are no penalties here. But what has happened is this battling has allowed Lucas in. I cannot tuck back in there because he has occupied that space. If I didn't, I'd be like that guy from a few videos ago. And if you haven't seen that, it's an absolute classic and I suggest you watch it after this video. But getting back to the race, I'm going to then find myself on the outside coming into turn one. I try to hang it round the outside but I can't keep it and I'm going to lose the place and go back down to 11th once again. But even if I'm on the losing end, it's great stuff there. I'm not too worried about it. Again, clean as a whistle. And as you can see a little bit later in the lap here, 10th is finally gonna go wide out of spoon. We're gonna jump at the opportunity and we're back up into the top 10. Now, settling for 10th place would be fine, but that guy up in front, as I've mentioned a couple of times before, is the first ever GT Academy winner. How could I sit here and settle for this one knowing he's in front? I'm gonna go after him. Let's see if we can take ninth here from Lucas Ordinez, somewhat of an icon here on GT Sport, here on the final lap. And this, guys, is what makes the one make races so exciting for me. Whilst you're all in the same machinery, it is a complete litmus test of how good anyone is on the game. By forcing everyone to be in identical machines, so literally the only variant can be people's speed and strategy. And I'm actually fighting with some of the top drivers in this game. Absolute dreamland for me. Such crazy times right now. But despite my best efforts over the final lap here, again staying very, very clean, no penalties to see here, I just couldn't get him and I'm going to come across the line to take my second top split top 10 in a row. But as we wait for the results to confirm here, Manu Rodri, you're going to see, race winner, disappears. And then Lucas, shortly after, is going to disappear as well, putting us up to 8th place. Now, in my book, this is a 10th place for me, even if the points will show that I got 8th. So as my 8th, which really should be 10th, is confirmed here, let's take a look at our driver rating points. But I'll be honest, I'm not too worried about them right now. I just can't believe that this was my third top split race in a row. Yeah, qualifying hasn't been great, so there's been a bit of a gap in raw speed, as I would expect as well, but my strategies really have brought me back into play here, and this is my second top 10 in a row. Maybe, just maybe, I do belong here. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comment section down below. And whilst I mull that over, I'm going to end the video there, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please do hit that like button and make sure you're subscribed if you haven't already. Thanks again so much for watching, though, guys, and I will see you in the next one. Cheers.